Speaker, it has come to my attention that a so-called leader has made the factually inaccurate statement that black folks were better off during Jim Crow. That's an outlandish, outrageous, and out-of-pocket observation. We were not better off when a young boy named Emmett Till could be brutally murdered without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when black women could be sexually assaulted without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when people could be systematically lynched without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when children could be denied a high quality education without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when people could be denied the right to vote without consequence because of Jim Crow. How dare you make such an ignorant observation? You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. America, Joe Biden's campaign is lying to you once again and they're gaslighting. Now they're trying to say that I said black people were doing better under Jim Crow. I never said that. They are lying. But why would you be surprised? Because they always lie. This is the same Joe Biden that said, if you don't vote for him, then you ain't black. The man is a liar. Sorry, just call it what it is. What I said was, is that you had more black families under Jim Crow. And it was the Democrat policies uh, under HEW, under the welfare state, that did help to destroy the black family. That's what I said. And I also said you're seeing a reinvigoration of black families today in America. And that is a good thing. So don't listen to the lies from the Biden administration. I know what I said, and I'll say it straight to camera. They got to run to the Philadelphia Inquirer to move their lies. Joe Biden does not care about black people. He never has. He cares about power first, second, and third. They can go somewhere with all that. See ya. A couple of weeks ago, I ran this poll on a community tab. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. And you can see that with nearly 1.1 thousand votes, that Byron Donalds is the person that most people believe should be the VP pick for Trump if he does decide to choose a black conservative. And I put the black conservative qualifier there because I want to speak about Byron Donalds. See, Byron Donalds is one of the few Republicans who has enough of a pool in the black community to really accompany President Trump when it comes to his message to the black community. And I say that because Byron Donalds is in the news again. Byron Donalds has been accused of saying that black people or black families were better off during Jim Crow than they are today. So here's this article from the New York Times. Byron Donalds, Trump VP contender, suggests Jim Crow era had an upside. Now, he was in Philadelphia to persuade black voters to support Donald Trump. It talks about Representative Byron Donalds suggested on Tuesday that the Jim Crow era had some virtues for black people while trying to persuade voters of color to back the former president. And it was at an event, Congress, Cognac and Cigars in Philadelphia. And he was there with Wesley Hunt, another black conservative, to promote Trump. And so they say, now you got to take this with a grain of salt, because obviously they had plants there to record what exactly those black conservatives had to say. At the event, Mr. Donald said that the programs that followed the Jim Crow era of racial violence and segregation, you know how they couch that racial violence and segregation. They don't talk about all the intact black families that were happening during Jim Crow. They don't talk about the black neighborhoods, the black communities that were thriving during Jim Crow because those communities were together. Yes, there was racial violence. Yes, there was segregation. Yes, there was things done. There was true oppression happening to black people at that time. But don't think that black people were just struggling during that time. Some black people were actually thriving during that time. You ever heard of Madam C.J. Walker? You ever heard of other people? W.E.B. Du Bois? There were people that were actually thriving during, you ever heard, you heard of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, uh, Mound Bayou down in Mississippi? There were a lot of communities in Wilmington. There was a community that was the Greenwood community. I think in Wilmington, there were communities that were thriving during Jim Crow because all the black people were intact. They were together. Their families were together. You see, this is Byron Donalds. You see during Jim Crow, the black family was together. 
during Jim Crow, more black people are not just conservative because black people have always been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservatively. True, they did. They did because you have to understand the history of the Republican Party. You know, the Republican Party in some states was founded and incorporated by black people because the Republican Party was a party of Lincoln. The Republican Party was a place that black people could affiliate with in order to exercise their right to vote, to exercise their political capital at that time. So yes, they voted Republican. So his comments drew criticism because he said the black family was together during Jim Crow. You notice that they took umbrage, the Biden campaign. You have to understand Joe Biden and his campaign are struggling with black folks. So they're going to use any and everything that they can to continue to hit the message that Donald Trump is a racist. Donald Trump and the Republicans don't know about black people. Donald Trump and the Republicans don't know about the history of racism. They don't know about the history of segregation. Don't they know you're still a victim? Don't they know you're still oppressed? That same old scare attack, that same old fear mongering that they're doing, that they're pushing on the black community. But what they're realizing is that a lot of black people, especially younger black people, are throwing off that victim mentality. They recognize that they have agency. They're done with doing what their parents and grandparents were have been doing for the last 60 some odd years with no results. Here's a spokesperson woman for Biden's campaign. Donald Trump spent his adult life, here we go, and then his presidency undermining the progress. No, they didn't. That's a lie. Donald Trump set up opportunity zones and other stuff. This is a straight up lie. Undermining the progress black communities fought so hard for. So what? Really? Have you seen the black communities in New York, Chicago, Detroit? What kind of progress has been made with Democrats in charge? You tell me that. What kind of progress has been made with liberals and Democrats in charge? So it actually tracks that his campaign's black outreach is going to a white neighborhood and promising to take America back to Jim Crow. He didn't say that. She said that black voters would reject Mr. Trump's racist agenda in November. I highly doubt that. So obviously, because Byron Donald's words were taken out of context, you had the puppets dancing for Joe Biden. First was Hakeem Jeffries. This figure has come to my attention that a so-called leader has made the factually inaccurate statement that black folks were better off during Jim Crow. That's a lie. He did not say that. You just saw the article I just read. He did not say that black people were better off during Jim Crow, but that's what these Democrats do. They take your words and they twist it to further their agenda, especially what they're trying to do is to scare black people into thinking that Republicans want to put them back in chains. But that's what Joe Biden said. That's an outlandish, outrageous, and out of pocket observation. We would not better off when a young boy named Emmett Till could be brutally murdered without consequence because of Jim Crow. We would not better off when black women could be sexually assaulted without consequence because of Jim Crow. We would not better off when people could be systematically lynched without consequence because of Jim Crow, we were not better off when children could be denied a high quality education without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were See, that's what these Democrats do. They patronize you. So you're trying to tell me that before Brown versus the Board of Education, when black teachers actually taught black children that the quality of education was bad. I beg to differ with you, sir, because I'm looking at the quality of education right now in America, and it is horrible. Black children are years behind in learning. Years behind, sir. But you guys do nothing about it because you're in the bed with the Teachers Association and the Teachers Union, and you continue to have this soft bigotry of low expectations. I know plenty of black people that during this time were thriving, okay? because black teachers were teaching the black children. And so therefore the black children learned, they had discipline because they wanted to learn because they wanted to better themselves. Are you telling me that the educational system now is better than it was when black teachers were teaching the black children? I, I disagree with you on that one. But not better off when people could be denied the right to vote without consequence because of Jim Crow. How he won't tell you this inconvenient truth either that Jim Crow is actually pushed by Southern Democrats the Democratic Party he wouldn't mention that little fact to you there you make such an ignorant 
observation. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. I yield back. Dude, you trying too hard, man. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Wow. <laughs> You taking us back, Hakeem, to the 80s, huh? So naturally, Byron Donalds had to respond to this nonsense. I grew up with my mom. My dad and my mom, things didn't work out. As an adult, I look at my father and I say, bro, I don't know what happened, but you my father and I love you. Wow. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Wow. But I'm going to tell you this. Coming growing up, the one thing I knew I wanted to do, and this is not about my father, this is about what I wanted to do, is I wanted to be a father to myself. Wow. Uh, and so one of the things that's actually happening in our culture, which you're now starting to see in our politics, is the, re in, the reinvigoration of black families with younger black men and black women. And that is also helping to breed the revival of a black middle class in America. You see, during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative, because black people always have been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservatively. And then, H.E.W., Lyndon Johnson, and then you go down that road, and now we are where we are. What's happened in America the last 10 years, and I say it because it's my contemporaries, it's Wesley's contemporaries, you're starting to see more black people be married in homes, raising kids. It's when you home with your wife raising your kids, and then you look at the world, you're saying, now, wait a minute, time out. This does not look right. How can I get something to my kids? It goes back to the conversation of generational wealth. Not just having a job. Generational wealth. I'm looking at my kids. How can my kids be on my shoulders when they take off in life? That's what's happening. So you have to understand, were black people better off overall during Jim Crow than they are now on the whole when it comes to poverty and things like that? No, they weren't. Because you had a system in place to keep black people in a permanent state of second class. So overall, no, black people were not better off then than they were now because they were denied opportunities. But black families were better then than they were now because when the welfare state came into play, when FDR and then LBJ through the Great Society program decided to kick the man at the house, and insert government in place of the man, that's when the disintegration of the black family began. That's when you started to have this downward spiral when it came to children being born out of wedlock. That's when you had this downward spiral take place with all this crime, with this all this dumbing down of standards, when all of these things happened because the man was kicked out of the house. So black families were thriving better before and during Jim Crow than they are now. That is a fact. And I'm not the only one that said that. Dr. Thomas Sowell has been talking about this for decades. In this case, you're writing not only about African Americans, but about low income people generally. In the United States, murder rates, rates of infection among with venereal diseases, and rates of teenage pregnancies were among the social pathologies whose steep declines, declines were suddenly reversed in the 1960s. Nowhere was rampant violence and other social pathology as common among low-income people in the first half of the 20th century when they were more deprived, as in the second half when the welfare state had made them better off in material terms." Close quote. Again, it's not the intention of anybody mm -hmm. enacting the welfare state to cause increases in violence, mm -hmm. but it happened. Yes. What was the disconnect between intentions and what emerged? Oh, heavens, uh, they, they, they misdiagnosed the causes of things, and therefore uh, they misdiagnosed the effect uh, to, to, to expect. For example, in the case uh, of uh, venereal diseases, sex education was introduced on a mass basis in the 1960s, and when the arguments for doing it were, one, to reduce the level of, uh, of, of venereal diseases and of uh, teenage unwanted pregnancies, uh, and both those things had been going down on their own. That is, uh, and by 1960, the uh, rate of infection for venereal diseases was something like half of what it was in 1950. 
And then they, they bring in the sex education, and it turns around and shoots up. Among blacks, uh, and the homicide rates among black males declined by 18% in the 1940s, by 22% in the 1950s, and then skyrocketed in the 1960s, wiping out all that progress. And they, they had a different view of the world, and their view just did not meet the test of time. Instance, uh, this kind of retrogression, the family, again, discrimination and disparities. As of 1960, this one, I just find this one heartbreaking. As of 1960, two-thirds of all black American children were living with both parents. That declined over the years until only one-third were living with both parents in 1995. Among black families in poverty, 85% of the children had no father present close yeah. quote so it's not the legacy of slavery, slavery that destroys the african-american it's the, it's, family. The, it's, the, it's the legacy of the welfare state and by the way we see Ill illegitimacy rates rising among everybody yeah and, and in other countries and mm. you know the, the, the very same thing in england uh, and, and what's the mechanism why does the welfare state dissolve the family structure for one thing, uh, it makes it unnecessary for fathers to uh, support their, their, their offspring. And in fact, it makes it counterproductive in many cases. A very poor man who, who might be able to support his family realizes his family will be better off without him. But on the other hand, someone who's st strictly irresponsible, either the man or the woman or both, now pays no price for being irresponsible. The, the taxpayers pay the price. And actually, the, the harm done to the taxpayers, which is serious, still is not, com not comparable to the harm done to the, to the families, especially the children. To the kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, Moynihan was, was uh, excoriated for pointing this out. 1965, uh, the, the, Moynihan, the Moynihan, Moynihan Report. That's right, yes. the Moynihan Report. What, and and what, what is so, people that took this as a, as a way of uh, putting, putting down blacks, what they don't understand was that, one, Moynihan was a scholar who knew that his own group, the Irish Americans, had that very same problem at the beginning of the 20th century. And more importantly, Moynihan's own father deserted the family when he was 10 years old. Oh, I didn't know that. He and his brother were out shining shoes in Times Square and Central Park to try to bring in some, a few pennies to help, help the, keep the house going. And so where they'd been living in this wonderful suburban area, suddenly they were in a very rough neighborhood and they were shining shoes in, in Times Square to try, to try to make ends meet. And so he understood that this was one heck of a problem that, that people should be warned about. And he was simply excoriated. Since Joe Biden is struggling so much with the black community because he has done nothing for black people, he has kept none of the so-called promises that he's made since he's been in office, they're going to do whatever they can to reinforce the notion that Republicans are racist. Donald Trump is a racist. They're going to bring up all the history of Donald Trump from the Central Park Five to what he's done with his properties and construction and those kind of things and no one here is justifying that but what i'm telling you is that they're doing that to distract from the truth of the matter that joe biden does not care about black people he only wants to use black people for power and so is byron donald's right that the black family under jim crow was better than it is now yes he is right in that sense because the families were intact. And he's also right because back then people had a genuine relationship with God and Jesus. And now you have these church plants on every corner that are doing the bidding of the Democratic Party. They have also sabotaged the black family. They have also sabotaged the black community. So Byron Donalds is speaking the truth from that sense when he says that the black family was better off during Jim Crow and was doing better. He was not insinuating that black people as a whole were better off during Jim Crow. He's just talking about the black family was intact. But Democrats don't care about the family. Democrats want to continue to keep pushing this victim narrative that black folks are oppressed, that you cannot do nothing. That is 1924 instead of 2024. Well, I'm here to tell you, Hakeem Jeffries and Joe Biden, we're not victims. We are empowered for greatness.